Hey guys, welcome back to Mystic Destinies. Now we've moved on to Shinji's route after having completed the prologue. Originally this was supposed to be up like an hour ago, only for me to realize that the video didn't have any audio, which was like totally a mistake on my part. But now that I fixed everything, and I've double checked to make sure everything's fine, we can finally move into Shinji's route. I only played the first two chapters that are available. Yeah, there's three chapters that are available, I think, or maybe five, actually, it should be five. Um, so, I think we're gonna do either two chapters or three. Um, I'm gonna be timing this just to, to see how long it takes. I don't want this video to go over too long. Anyway, let's get started. Chapter 1, Stormbringer. I look up at the men around me. My eyes meet those of the guy with purple and red hair. He calmly stares back at me. It's as if he knows so much that I don't. I get such a peaceful feeling looking at him that I automatically whisper his name, Shinji. Oddly enough, he seems, looks surprised. Me? I nod. There's something comfort comforting about him, more than the other guys. Shu... Sho seems kind of unreliable, and Tetsuya seems irritable. I think Shinji would be patient with me. A good choice. Shinji will take good care of you. Yeah, you made the best choice, I think. Shinji is great at helping people. I don't know how much you can rely on him, but at least he knows what he's doing. Quite a compliment coming from you, Tatsu. Shinji turns to me, seeming to examine me for a moment. I stare evenly back at him. Did he not want to be chosen? But then he seems to make up his mind. Okay, well if you're sure then, cool. If you live close by, I'll go ahead and walk you home then. You look like you're about to collapse from exhaustion. Sounds great. I'm honestly so tired that I think I can hear my bed calling to me. I struggle to push myself up before a hand appears in front of me. I look up. Need help? I take Shinji's hand, and he gently pulls me up. I still feel a little worn out though, and it's ridiculous how shaky I am. Shinji gently puts an arm around my shoulder to act as a stabilizing force for me. Although it's embarrassing, I'm graceful. It sounds like I said graceful. It's grateful. We slowly walk into the elevator. Shinji presses the buttons for us with one hand, while holding on to me with the other. I glance at Shinji, and he seems to be thinking again. For my part, I just try to act like it's normal for a strange guy to be this close to me. But he smells so nice. It reminds me of what the wind might smell like. The wind. Hmm. Pretty sure wind doesn't have a smell, but okay. I find it so comforting that I end up relaxing. We step out of the elevator and make our way out of the building. I've been staring at the wet road in front of me, set sparkling by the sunset. We've been entirely silent the whole time. It isn't something I mind too much with Shinji for some reason, but my mind is starting to go dark places. I decide to distract myself by striking up a conversation. Hey, you remember last week at Business Club? Yeah. Um, I kind of felt like you were staring at me a lot. And then you started to say something and left. It freaked me out. What was that about? Oh, it's tough to explain. But there was something about your aura that day. I was trying to figure it out. My aura? Shinji nods, but he doesn't say anything else. I want to ask more, but then he starts talking. Hey, I was just thinking. There's a lot of interesting classes you can sign up for if you want to learn more about the supernatural world. Like, Intro to the Unseen World. Professor Step Bienti teaches that one. It might be kind of advanced for a newcomer, but you should be able to understand most of it. And if there's something you don't get, I'd be happy to explain. Also, there's a really good one that should help you with your powers, called Control and Focus. While we're talking, a car comes out of nowhere. It speeds towards us on the previously empty road. Suddenly, Shinji pushes me behind him. I hear the sound of tires churning up water, and feel faint raindrops on my face. Ugh. It's then I realize that Shinji got hit with the water from one of the many puddles. Oh, Shinji, you got splashed, didn't you? No, I'm just wet for other reasons. You didn't have to do that, you know. Shinji sighs and closes his eyes for a moment before replying. It's fine, don't worry about it. Really? Smiles brilliantly down at me to reassure me. I can see that the water drenched him though. 
His wet hair clings to his face in some places and hangs dripping in others. In the dying rays of the sun, I can see beads of water glisten on his skin. I'm captivated by the unexpectedly beautiful sight before me. Still, I just thought that you've been through a lot recently. So the last thing you need is to be covered in dirty water. I look down, feeling grateful that someone seems to understand how I'm feeling. Thanks. And I meant more than just for protecting me from the water. We finally arrive at my apartment building. Thanks for walking me home. I start to climb the stairs, but Shinji's voice stops me. Hold up a sec. He takes a pen and piece of paper from his pocket and presses it, presses it against the building. He scribbles something on it and hands it to me. If you need to know anything or need some help, just let me know. On the slip of paper is Shinji's complete contact information. Sorry, I have to go run off so quick. I've got guitar practice I'm running late for. But if you start feeling like you're losing control, just remember to take deep breaths. That'll help you calm down. Anyway, sleep well. Shinji waves and walks off. I turn around and drag myself up the stairs into my apartment. Collapsing onto my bed, I reach into my pocket and pull out the piece of paper Shinji gave me. In clean, lovely cursive writing, his full name stands out clearly to me. I slowly recount everything I know about him. He talks to himself. He can see auras. He plays the guitar. Something about his presence feels comforting, but also like he's not quite there. I can't deny that there's something intriguing about him. Shinji Hiriyama. I whisper his name aloud before drifting off to sleep. As mysterious as Shinji is, my life doesn't change in any significant way under his guidance. He's even better than I hoped as my partner. Over the next three months, Shinji effortlessly teaches me the basics of magic, and I've still learned very little about him. Yeah, I was I found it kind of weird that they have like a time skip here because I think for the other routes, from what I know, like I never played sh uh, shows, but um, there isn't really a, any time skip, like not three months long anyway. So this is interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm thinking these things as I get ready to meet Shinji this afternoon. We've been meeting up on Sundays to go over everything that happened in the past week. It's just easier without class schedules in the way. Shinji's always thinking ahead like that. It's nice not having to worry about everything. I pick up my bag and hoist it on my shoulder. To be honest, I haven't been feeling myself ever since the incident with Shizuka. Every day I do what I'm supposed to. I get up in the morning, go to the regular classes, go to supernatural ones, Sometimes I go to business club, and then I go home, eat, do my homework, and sleep. Basically, she has like zero friends. Honestly, the most exciting part of my week is getting to see and work with Shinji. I glance at the mirror once more to check myself before I leave. One bright green eye stares back at me, and the proximity of my previous thoughts means I immediately think back to the ritual. Shizuka's cold green eyes staring down at me. How could she look like that when I'm in so much pain like this? I feel a ghostly fire trickling down my body, creeping through my veins. No. No. I don't have to deal with this, Bram. Now. I struggle with my emotions that threatened to keep me trapped in that time, in that place three months ago. I push down the tears that were coming and the nausea that was rising in my stomach. I turn away from the mirror. No. I can't do this today. It's fine. I can't be late meeting Shinji. Doggedly, I turn all my thoughts to ones of meeting Shinji on time. Just thinking about him always calms me down at times like this. After a few minutes, I feel okay enough to leave. Mental issues managed, I grab my keys off my dresser and head out the door. Since it's later in the day, more people are, are out walking than usual. Good. Not being alone always helps. The people and the warm December sunshine serve to pull my thoughts away from Shizuka. As I walk, I still my mind and think about the person I'm going to meet. My regular study sessions with him have made me into what I feel is a reasonably competent sorceress. Or at least they've kept my powers from going out of control well enough. I can't even imagine how bad things would be if I hadn't received lessons. Shinji taught me how much my emotions were tied to my powerful but unstable abilities. I was so afraid of unleashing my powers at first that I wonder if sometimes I didn't learn to underreact. My eyes wandered to the other side of the street where they settled upon a strange looking man with an eye patch and white hair. I feel compelled to stop. It feels like he's staring at me. He has a completely different feel than the people around him. But just as I think that, a group of people walks in front of him. When they pass by, the man is gone. 
What? How can you just... I look around everywhere, but the man left no trace. As fast as he disappeared, I have to wonder if he was even there in the first place. I'm sure I'm not seeing things. I don't think I'd be able to imagine someone who looked as distinctive as that. But what if he was a ghost? A little shiver goes through me, and I shake my head. I start walking again, faster than last time. No, I know there are all sorts of strange things in this world. Maybe some people have the ability to appear and disappear too? I'll have to ask Shinji. I make a note to myself to be a little more aware of my surroundings in case the guy pops up again and continue on my way. Hmm. Now that I think of it, I'm super lucky to have Shinji. I don't ask him any questions, but whenever I do, he always responds. And he usually knows the answer. And when he doesn't, he'll always remember to research it and come back with the answer the next time he sees me. I didn't expect that the first few times for sure. Shinji was the one to explain to me that because I'm a sorceress, I have the ability to wield many different types of magic. Once again, I feel extremely grateful for having picked Shinji as my partner. As an elemental mage, he's able to wield different types of magic too, but I still don't know what type I should master first. I turn the corner into the next street, and I almost walk straight into a pole. It's the guy again. At this point, I'm forced to admit that he might be some kind of stalker or a threat. What if he's a supernatural? He has to be with the way he keeps appearing. I don't know what I'll do if he attacks me out here. No, just calm down, Suba. Remember what Shinji taught you. Stay calm. Assess the situation and then go over what works best in that given situation. Water works best for fire and... I start to walk toward the man, but as soon as I blink, he's not there anymore. Um, okay. I'm kind of freaking out, but there's not much else I can do. I should just get to Shinji for now. I keep walking down the street, my eyes scanning for the strange man. Could that guy even... Who could that guy even be? I don't recognize him. I can't be imagining things, right? I sense someone right in front of me and turn my head too late. I almost collide with them, but they move to the side just in time. I realize that someone is my childhood friend, Takumi. What are you doing here, Taku? Walking? I see. Sorry about that. No harm done. You look like you're pretty spaced out, though. I... There's just... Come on, let's step out of the way. Takumi and I both step out of the steady stream of people on the sidewalk and stand off to the side. What's wrong, Tsubasa? This is going to sound weird, but like... I keep seeing this guy with an eye patch pop up everywhere. I don't know if he's even real because he disappears so fast. And this is the first time this has happened? I nod and I can already see Taku's eyes focusing elsewhere as the gears churn in his head. He's always been like this. I guess he senses a mystery. So he's basically like, Nancy Drew. I remembered my old friend after spending some time with him in Shinji one afternoon. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure how I forgot him. You know, I'm not sure if they touch on that in Takumi's route, like how she doesn't remember him. From, you know, what I can recall, I don't think they ever do. Maybe it's like an overarching thing. It happened not long after Shinji and I became partners. I was so shocked at how much he'd grown up since I'd left Japan. His hair was different the last time I'd seen him, and though he was energetic, he had always been a very gentle child. He looks so rebellious now. I wonder what Yasu thinks about it? Also of that, like, the fact that Takumi hasn't told her about Yasu's weird too, I don't know why he'd want to hide that. Maybe because it's such a touchy subject or something? Takumi's eyes meet mine then. Were you heading somewhere? Yeah, to meet Shinji for our weekly lesson. Excellent. I'll walk you there. Wait, didn't you have somewhere you were going? I was just dropping off something near here, but I'm all done now. So let's go. Takumi takes me by the wrist and drags me back onto the sidewalk. I've learned that Taku and Shinji get along really well whenever they see each other, so I can only assume that's the reason for Taku's enthusiasm now. Feeling a bit like a child being led, I pull my wrist back from him and speed up to walk by Taku's side. So how's your family been doing? Fine, I guess. Mom's a nag like usual. You know she'd kill you if she heard that. Ain't that the truth. <laughs> when we turn the corner, in the distance, I see that white-haired man again. Except this time, he's not looking at me. He seems to be staring at Takumi in complete surprise. I glance at Takumi, pointing. Taku, that guy. I turn to look at him again, but he's already gone. What is it, Tsubasa? Ugh, 
was that weirdo again, but he's gone now. Takumi squints at the air area in the crowd I was pointing to. I swear he was there. I believe you. You want me to go after him? After who? How is he even gonna go after him if that dude is, like, gone? We turn around at the sound of a voice behind us, and there stands Shinji. There's been some weird guy with an eye patch that seems to be following Tsubasa. But he disappears too fast for us to do anything. Hmm, okay. Thanks for telling me. Let me know if you see him again. This seems so casual, like... Oh yeah, there's just some weirdo following this lady. Oh well. I don't know, maybe they don't want to freak her out. Are you ready to go, Tsubasa? Actually, you mind if I come too? I never get to see you guys do any cool stuff. Shinji shrugs and looks at me. It's up to you. Hmm, I don't see any reason why not. Could be fun. Sweet. Thanks, Tsubasa. Let's go. With Takumi's exclamation, we continue as a group towards Shinji and I's practice spot. We ended up picking up some drinks from one of the shops in the building. It turned out Shinji knew the shop owner too, so he led us up onto the rooftop. You want a beer, Taku? Got an extra here. Yeah, I do. But I got work later, so nah. It'll make me sleepy and dehydrated. Takumi pops open the cap to an energy drink instead, and I frown at the dark circles I see under his eyes. Shinji shrugs and tosses back his can of beer. Speaking of which, you got my stuff? Stuff? Of course. Shinji reaches into his pocket and tosses Taku a small box, small box, a small box wrapped in brown paper. Takumi puts it in his pocket too fast for me to see what it is. He notices me staring at him though. I get the feeling that some shitty business is going on, but Takumi speaks before I can say anything. So, how's practice been going? Pretty well, I think. Shinji's a patient teacher. I take a sip of my tea. I've been practicing how to incorporate different elements into each other. I usually even do little things like heating up food or cooling my drink down. With that, I send just a bit of ice magic toward the tin, toward the can in my hand, causing it to lower in temperature. I admit I'm jealous. Must be nice having an iced tea whenever you want it. Yeah, I'm grateful for my magic at times. You've been making excellent progress so far. Have you decided what power you're going to pursue mastery of yet? No. It's hard to pick because I can see the benefits of all the different ones. But to be honest, I just don't care about gaining mastery. To me, it's fine enough just having control. Shinji nods at me and takes another sip of his beer. There's no real rush for you. It's okay if you take the time. I can't believe you haven't chosen yet, Tsubasa. Have you at least gotten used to how things work on the supernatural side? Kind of. You seem so apathetic about it. Aren't you even curious? It's always been fascinating to me. Do you have any questions, Tsubasa? Well, I guess there's a lot I don't know yet. I think about some of the things I've been idly wondering lately. Actually... <laughs> why are you so hot? Last time I did not ask this. Um... So embarrassing. They already asked this. Most powerful race I'm not sure about. Probably gods, I guess. Vampires are real, I know that. I don't want to ask anything. Okay, here we go. Why are you so hot, Shinji? Takumi chokes on his drink, and Shinji snorts and shrugs. Good genes, I guess. <laughs> oh, holy shit, why did I just ask that out loud? Sorry, Tsubasa. Play it off as a joke. Play it cool. Play it cool. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Instead of saying anything, I lift my tea, I lift my tea up to my lips with an air of calm that belies the tempest inside. Jeez, Tsubasa. Thirsty much? <laughs> I almost spit out my drink at these innocent words that could be about me drinking, but from the look on Taku's face, I doubt it. Takumi suddenly reaches into his pocket and pulls out his phone. His face is unusually severe when he looks at the screen. He gets up, holding his phone. Sorry guys, I gotta take this. Work. It's been fun, but I'll see you later. And he slides his finger across the phone and only says Arai in a quiet voice as he walks away towards the stairs. My eyes follow after him, a bad feeling rising. He's a lifeguard, right? Yeah. So why would they be calling him? The plot thickens. Oh, maybe he had to take a shift or something suddenly. Shinji doesn't answer, but merely shrugs again. You've been doing well with your classwork and managing your powers. If you keep it up, you won't need my help anymore. 
I smile, feeling happy because I know enough to understand that Shinji only says things he means. Thank you. But no matter how well I'm doing, there's so much I don't know, and I still might need your help. I'll be there for you as long as you need me. I'll keep helping you the best of, to the best of my ability for as long as you do. And if there's something I can't help you with, I'll make sure to find someone who can. Thanks. You're really sweet, you know that? I don't think I'm sweet, but thanks. After that, we practice and discuss studies a bit more before Shinji has to go. Just remember to text me if you ever need anything. Doesn't matter, even if it's in the middle of the night, alright? Mm. Alright. Yeah, I know. Thanks. I quickly help him clean up what we brought onto the roof, and I get ready to head down the stairs. I'll walk with you for a little while, just in case that weirdo shows up again. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. With the sun beginning to set, we head down the stairs. In the end, Shinji decides to walk me, walk with me all the way to my house, something I very much appreciated. While not much happened, I always enjoy just being around Shinji. I'm glad that he always manages to carve out some time for me. Finally, in front of my apartment building, we stop. I'll see you later. Have a good night. Shinji turns to go, but something in me makes me reach out and grab his arm. Could we, could we meet up more often throughout the week? It might help me improve faster if you could meet more often. Especially if you could show me some of the supernatural world. As much as you can, anyway. Shinji looks down at me for a moment, not responding. I find my heart rate increasing as the seconds stretch on. Sure. Relief washes over my tense muscles, and I reluctantly let go of his arm. Thanks for walking me home. I start walking up the stairs, and I stop to look back at Shinji. But he's already gone. I sigh and start walking up the steps again. I hope Shinji isn't late to whatever, wherever he had to go. But I'm so glad he said yes. And he's going to show me new things. Today he showed me there's so much more out there that I, than I had thought about before. For the first time in a long while, even though I don't know why, I feel exa excited. This has to be a clear sign that we were coming closer. In a good mood, I go into my apartment. Alright, so... On second thought, I think I'm going to leave it here. It's been about like 20 minutes of playing. Um, and it might be like a bit better to kind of do it chapter by chapter rather than, you know, putting chapters together because then, you know, we're going to be playing for a really long time. And I'm sure, you know, people aren't really that interested in, you know, playing 40 minutes of this. So... If you liked it, you know, like and comment, subscribe, let me know, and I'll upload the second chapter maybe sometime tomorrow. We'll see. And let me know what you guys think so far. I'm not sure how I feel about Shinji's route. I don't know, like, right now he doesn't really seem like that much of an intriguing character. You know, he's like really laid back, so I don't really know much about him. But I guess that's supposed to be kind of part of the intrigue. Because he's so, like, mysterious. But, um, yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll leave it here. And to those who are... Well, I feel like I already um, talked about voltage, right? Um, I'm still trying to, like, figure out how to record the screen. Hopefully I can come up with something. And I'll be able to, you know, do some of the routes. Because I am really interested in them. It's just that... You know, since I don't have any recording software, I don't want to play the game and then not have any commentary to give you guys during the video. And it won't be as interesting. Anyway, so with that wrapped up, I'll see you guys later.